Hello everyone, my name is Steph. Welcome to my home. Today we're gonna do something I haven't really done before. This is going to be a get ready with me game review and I'm really excited about this. I love dishing about beauty and video games and I wanna do it at the same time. So this will be the first of many get ready with me game reviews. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the soon to be released Minecraft Legends. And while I talk to you about the game, I'm gonna be doing a makeup look inspired by it as well. First and foremost, this is not a really harsh game critic style review. I like to share the things that I like about games. I think each and every game has something to offer somebody, and I am often very excited about the games that I spend my time playing. This is absolutely not an exception. I loved Minecraft Legends, and I have a lot to tell you about the things that I think make it great. If you have any questions about the game or the makeup throughout the process of the video, please let me know in the comments. I'm gonna do my best to get back to as many people as possible, and you know, I'd love the dish with you. Now, without further ado, let's get started with my overall thoughts while I start with my skin. So overall, I think Minecraft Legends is a fantastic game. I enjoyed the heck out of it as I played through uh, in co-op with my partner, Travis. I am gonna try to keep this pretty spoiler free in terms of story and like surprises and unlockables, but I do wanna say some specific things. So for the gameplay of Minecraft Legends, it blends like action and strategy with the traditional pillars of Minecraft. So exploration, survival, and crafting. And I think it does it in a really unique way. You get a little bit of everything um, out of those different categories. I did play through the entire campaign. I finished it front to back with my partner. Loved it. It was so much fun. And I also had the opportunity to try one of their sort of um, like alternative gameplay modes called Lost Legends, which is sort of a scenario based like mission type sort of closed experience, not like a full campaign with a story and characters. Something I'd like to shout out is there is definitely a going to be a super robust PVP mode. I didn't get the chance to try it, but I can already tell based on the gameplay that that PVP is going to be a huge hit in the gaming community. I can see myself really enjoying watching some like expert players just duke it out in the PvP mode. I'm excited to see where that goes. The difficulty is variable with a variety of different like difficulty modes you can choose, different settings. And they range from like a very, very easy story-based approach where the challenge is minimal, but you still get to experience the story and the gameplay all the way to legendary, which is the maximum difficulty. And Travis and I played on Mythic, which is one level below legendary. Speaking of which, co-op is not only possible, it's encouraged, and I think it fits really well with the gameplay. So my partner and I played the entire campaign together, front to back, and you can play the entire campaign in co-op with up to four players total. So that's yourself, the host, and up to three guests. We put somewhere between like 12 and 20 hours. I wasn't counting, maybe I should. I'm gonna keep that in mind for future videos. Somewhere between 12 and 20 hours to 100% the story, you know, do everything that we could. And in that time, we got somewhere around like 60% of all of the achievements. Something I'll tell you now, and that will come up in these Get Ready With Me game reviews is we are achievement hunters. We love achievements. We have between ourselves, a friendly competition with Gamerscore. We're big Xbox fans and our Gamerscore matters a lot to us. So when we first met, I was like 20,000 points behind Travis and I have since caught up, okay? And I think I'm, we're pretty evenly matched, but I'm always trying to get ahead. But the point is there are a variety of great achievements in this game. So if you like achievement hunting, they feel like appropriate. They're not dished out too often, but they're not withheld either. So once in a while you get an achievement for doing something like well or thoroughly, and you'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. That feels good. And I think that adds to my enjoyment of games anyway, is getting that little like, ooh, you got something. Ooh, the dopamine, ooh. But maybe that's just me, I don't know. All of the achievements were rewarding and they came from progressing the game in like a natural, meaningful way. We didn't really have to go super out of our way for those achievements. Now to talk a little bit more about the gameplay, it really harkens to like a Dynasty Warriors, Hyrule Warriors sort of gameplay where you are a hero and you have an army that you control and you ride into battle and you control the army and you're giving orders and you're experiencing this very like large scale epic battle. However, on the Minecraft side of things, it's balanced out with exploration as well as like base building and defense. And it's all wrapped up in a nice little bow with that gorgeous Minecraft IP with the characters, the setting, the color palettes. Ooh, speaking of which, that's what I like to call world feel. Okay, this game, Minecraft Legends, has a fantastic world feel. That's like how tangible, how memorable is the environment, the world, the soundtrack, the art side of things. How does it like make you feel? Minecraft Legends has got the world feel dialed in. 
Okay. And they do that with their fantastic soundtrack, which has those like Minecraft elements to it, but it's also booming, like epic. Ooh, arr. And I think some of the songs that stand out the most to me on the soundtrack are for your enemy, your antagonist, the Piglins. They have some really cool music going on, which I like, oh. It's got still like that Minecraft feel to it, but it also has a twist of like epic fantasy battle, right? Very like large, ooh, uh, Return of the King moment, you know what I mean? And that stands out because it's super present in the gameplay and the music, music and sound design does a great job of tying that together and making you feel like you're part of that battle and that environment and that world and what's going on right then and there. Back to the world feel, the size and the scope of the world is really good. It feels good to like travel between locations on your mount and there's also a fast travel system that's pretty good and it allows you to place like fast travel points yourself so that you can like determine, okay, this is an important location. I want to come back here. But those things are not without some responsibility on your part, which is fun. Like you do have to maintain the things that you put in the world. Otherwise the piglins could come along and say like, not today. Not today. And while that's very rude, it also makes for fun gameplay. Overall, I feel like there's a pretty good balance though between like peacefulness and danger. And you generally know what you're getting into when you're going around the world. Things are very well communicated visually. And that's in big part due to the amazing color palette, which, you know, Minecraft has always been really colorful, but I feel like Minecraft Legends takes that Minecraft color palette and world feel and it like dials it up a little bit, dials it to like a slightly different frequency. How's that bass looking y'all? Are we looking good to move forward? Hmm. Some of my favorite environments in Minecraft Legends are from the friendly villager villages that you're trying to defend. And I just adore the color palette they've got going on there. And the look today actually is gonna be inspired by those villages. And they've got a really beautiful like white marble. Maybe it's diorite in the game, I'm not sure. Along with like blues and purples and like a gold, orange gold, really pretty really gorgeous, very spring. How appropriate. So that's where we'll be going with the makeup today. I have not planned this look out. We're gonna find, <laughs> we're gonna find out together what it is as I go along, cause I am winging it. So into gameplay, I feel like you can split the campaign gameplay into three sort of major categories. And that is exploration, defense, and siege. Each of these like phases has a real different feel to them and its own little learning curve and its own set of things that you gotta take care of. I think it's a lot of fun and creates a balanced experience. So I have mentioned like exploration is a part of this game, but it is a smaller part of this game than you might get from say your standard Minecraft experience. So don't go into this game expecting to be adventuring and like harvesting resources and um, crawling across the overworld on foot for the perfect spot to build a base for like five hours. That's not the experience with Minecraft Legends. Instead, a lot of that is expedited with the assistance of the Allays, which are these fairy light creatures that assist you with all the things you would normally do with your little block hands in Minecraft. So harvesting resources, constructing, um, those things are done by the Allays at your command. I'm trying to decide on a white, hmm. Glistening snow is pretty, but is it white or is it beige? Your girl doesn't know. I do have a matte white. Maybe that'll do. Ooh, yeah, we're doing this one. You start out being able to harvest like wood and stone. I think that's it actually. And then new resources are unlocked through gameplay progression and through constructing what are essentially unlock towers around the central hub of the game. And these unlock towers allow you to harvest and utilize these new materials like redstone or diamond, for example, by unlocking other like blueprints in your songbook, which is how everything is done in Minecraft Legends is through your songbook. So any structures that you want to build and looking for information on enemies or other things is all done through the songbook interface, which is this really cute sort of spellbook approach to your, what are essentially like your player skills. While you are exploring in the world, you can find some special things. We found a lot of things that we would have to come back for later, including like allies that we could recruit or special structures that we could take advantage of, but we needed to unlock other things first. So there was sort of these goal posts that we found through exploration that kind of guided us towards certain goals in the gameplay, which I thought was a really nice and natural way of that being done. 
Other things that you can find out in the world are actually your mount variety is pretty cool. In standard Minecraft, you've got your horse. You can also like ride a boat through the water and I think that's pretty much where it ends for your standard Minecraft experience. But in Minecraft Legends, there are a few different creatures you can encounter in different biomes that can help you out as mounts and they all have different capabilities. You might actually wanna use a couple of them based on like what you're doing in the game because they'll be useful in different scenarios. For example, one of them is the fastest. One of them can glide and fly. One of them can climb walls. Travis and I definitely favored the beetles for their wall climbing ability. That was very useful to us throughout our experience. Each of the other mounts has its own thing going on with the exception maybe of the horse. However, the horse is adorable and is a cute ham horse and that just is gorgeous and also like nays really listen i'm not saying anything negative about the horse the horse deserves the world the horse inherits the overworld okay but i did i did use the beetle as my primary mount so Overall, the exploration experience is not the most important or the thing you'll be doing the most of, but it does help to further enhance the gameplay. Like it does feel good to do. You will be doing it. It will feel like it has purpose and the world is fun to run around in. It's very beautiful. I'm trying a different liquid liner today and she's a little wetter than I'm used to. So I'm doing my best. So if exploration is all about you're gathering materials, you're exploring the world, you're discovering objectives, nighttime is where defense comes in. And the nighttime phase is really cool. There's a very high learning curve to it, but it's not like hard. It's just like it really encourages you through the gameplay to ask questions like, how can I improve this base layout? What tools do I have at my disposal to better improve the chances that I'm gonna defend this successfully? And it does that really well. So each night the piglins are like, ooh, we gotta go, we gotta be, we gotta be like, being piglins out there in the world we gotta you know like we gotta hit those villagers and they do so you'll have during the day the opportunity to see what the piglins are going to do at night and you can prepare and you can make choices because they're going to be doing more than one thing and you cannot respond to every threat well you can try and you may succeed but you know cut yourself some slack have some boundaries around your goals all right nobody can do everything all the time you gotta manage your burnout yeah, this is me giving myself advice. During the day, you have the opportunity to see what the piglins plan on doing and you can choose your response. One of the things that they can do is target a friendly village, a villager village, creeper, skeleton, or zombie village. And something that surprised me was kind of how emotional I got when I saw like mobs that I traditionally was afraid of or, you know, wasn't necessarily fond of seeing pop up in my base like a creeper. How emotional I got seeing them need my help to defend themselves and their village. Maybe that's just because, you know, I've been playing Minecraft since I was like 12 years old. I'm 20, 27. It's 15 years. I'm pretty attached, okay, to these creatures. But I, I just think that they were well characterized. All of the allies that you're defending are well characterized. I felt compelled to help them. And I think that's just really good, like narrative design and narrative approach. So right away, when you start the game and you're doing your first sort of defense objectives, you have access to a few different structures. So you start with like your standard wooden walls, wooden gates, arrow towers, your creature spawners for the first few uh, creatures that you have, which are all like little golem constructs. They're very cute. I can see them being fan favorites moving forward. I can even see Mojang maybe migrating them into the standard Minecraft IP or into dungeons as well. But you've got these basic things and you have to learn how to use them effectively to sort of efficiently defend against the piglins when you're building your base. At first I was doing these like wild angular walls like I was just in a rush to place these structures because I was like oh my gosh they're coming. Oh! So at first it was it was quite a mess it really was but over time I was able to learn how to like efficiently place my walls and towers in a neat and orderly way that improved the readability of the battlefield allowed me to know what was going on and also improved the chances of survival for the village so that it didn't become occupied by piglins overnight. It is also essential to use your army to defend the villagers, not just your structures. And this is where the core of what you'll be doing during both defensive and siege gameplay comes in. Unless you're playing multiplayer and you have like special jobs, you will be controlling your army to defend against the piglins. You start out with a few different sort of basic little golem constructs, but you unlock new unit types by progressing through objectives, exploration, and the story. As far as the different unit types available to you, there's a fair spread. You have 
all of your standard archetypes, like you've got a healer unit, you've got a ranged unit, you've got um, like a melee bruiser that knocks things down, you've got um, siege and demolitions units. I think there is room for them to add more and I would be surprised if they didn't add more with DLCs or expansions or updates just because there's so much potential for what they could add here. Now actually controlling the army is something you do manually while you're in combat, giving them targets and orders and movement orders or just having them follow you around through the use of the banner of courage, which you will be using a lot of, and you'll have to get very familiar with how to use it. You can order your units to follow you, to stay where they are, to charge a position, to attack a specific enemy or structure. So you have lots of options as far as what orders you can give them, and it's all sort of done through the same like few button presses. Uh, so it's pretty intuitive. Now there is a limit to how many units you can summon or control at one time, but those limits can be increased at your discretion if you have the right materials with these upgrade towers that you can build. I played this game with a controller and I'm usually a keyboard mouse player but something was saying pick up that controller girl and so I did pick up that controller girl and that ended up being a good choice. It felt like an intuitive choice for this game and I would recommend trying it out with controller unless you are unable to play with a controller. The gameplay the movement is all very smooth and fluid and I felt that key bindings and like these it just sometimes keyboard mouse can feel more like very analog input and the controller can feel very flowy and that's how I choose. I'm like, what does this game feel like? And this felt like a controller game. What I mean to say is that with the controller, commanding the armies was a fairly intuitive thing to do. I never really felt frustrated with the control scheme. I felt like it was pretty well done and well made. The entire game actually overall has a level of polish that I haven't seen with a new release in a very long time. We encountered no bugs whatsoever. And this was with the pre-release copy that was released to play before the game was released fully. So this is with no like update patches, bug fixes after release. This is just right out of the box before the box, okay? And we encountered nothing that was like upsetting, frustrating, um, a barrier. It was all very well polished. Back to the point though. Something that I think stands out is that the game wants you to be in the fray with your army. It doesn't want you standing at the back giving orders. It wants you up there with your units, fighting the good fight against the piglins to save and unite the overworld. They want you up there, yeah. And I thought that was really cool. However, where your role in combat really shines is with the siege gameplay, which is really good. And I want to tell you all about it. Before I get into siege though, I do just want to say narratively, and I said I would give no spoilers and I will give no spoilers, but narratively this game does some interesting things. It is kept fairly light because it's Minecraft. It's very approachable. It's very friendly, but they do still like address some things about the world building of Minecraft that I thought was really interesting. I've seen no statements by Mojang or any of the creators of the game saying that this is like a narrative heavy experience that you need to take really seriously, but I'm a narrative girl. Okay. I like my narrative and I see so many interesting little world building things in this game that if you like lore and you love the Minecraft world, you're going to play this game. You're going to see them and you're going to be like, Oh wow. Like they did that. This especially is prevalent with the piglins. Um, but also with some of the friendly creatures too. So pay attention. Some of the, I got a little, I got a little tinfoil hattie playing this game. I got some speculation going on. Maybe I can do a video talking about Minecraft speculation with Minecraft Legends. Like, let me know if you want that because I could go off, okay? But I'm just saying, if you're a narrative kind of person, you will see, I think, some interesting things in this game when it comes to how the world is built and how the characters are pushed through the world. It's interesting to me. Now, when it comes to siege gameplay, this is my absolute favorite part of the game. And I'm normally like a base builder. I am all about the creative. I'm not normally the kind of person that's like, let me go fight the enemy. I normally want to like sit at the base and build beautiful things. But let me tell you, the siege gameplay got me fired up in Minecraft Legends. And my partner and I had tons of fun, especially with the larger piglin bases, because it was such a challenge and such a task to get in there and complete the objectives and, you know, conclude this battle. Now, anything in this game, like I said, like you can set the difficulty to a really low setting and you can have this done pretty easily. And even on the higher difficulties, you can win a lot of things through attrition, but it feels fun to try in this game. And not every game achieves that, but I think they did a really good job with making the gameplay actually enjoyable, okay? And that might sound silly to say, but a lot of modern releases rely on like psychological tactics to get you to play longer, to get you interested, to get you hooked. This game just wants you to have fun 
and that is so cool to me. And it does a really good job at it. Something to note with the Siege gameplay is the larger Piglin force is divided into three sort of subcultures. And I'm not gonna tell you what those are because mama said no spoilers, but with the footage that I've been inserting in this video, you can probably see a few different kind of vibes. And each of the Piglin groups has different sort of approaches to combat. They've got different structures, different base layouts, and different units to contend with. So your strategy has to change, and it did for us with each of the different types. For example, one uh, group builds like really defensible tall walls and like a really defended base. One group builds on like really high plateaus. So you're gonna siege those bases very differently. The variety between the Piglins is I think really solid. It's really solid for the amount of gameplay, the length of the campaign. I didn't get bored of the enemies and I think that's great. Taking a second to talk about the enemies actually, cause I mentioned earlier, like I think they did a good job characterizing say like the creepers, for example, they did a great job with the Piglins. Traditionally, I've not been much of a nether explorer when I play Minecraft. I haven't been super like drawn in to be like, let me fight these Piglins let me trade gold with them. That wasn't the thing that drew me to the world of Minecraft the most. But playing through Minecraft Legends, the piglins are like so exciting to me now. I want to know more about them. And this is where that narrative thing comes in is like they did some things here. Okay. And I don't know where they're going to go with it, but some things were done. I don't know if this was intentional or not. This is not a complaint. This is a compliment. I feel like they really drew on the different clans of orcs from Warcraft 2 Beyond the Dark Portal. And there's a lot of like, I can see some inspo there. I like what I see with the piglins a lot. I wanna see more of them. I would love a top-down RTS game in the Minecraft world now, which is not something I would have asked for prior to playing Minecraft Legends, but this stuff is flexible and it's so cool. Anyway, Siege gameplay and co-op was a lot of fun because we ended up developing a strategy and my partner and I, I'm just gonna have to talk to you. I can't do lip liner and talk at the same time. My partner and I, when we play co-op games, we usually will like split into two different roles that complement each other well. That's why we love co-op. We love finding like ways to work together within the systems of the game. So I would go in with the army and with the units and I would be kind of pulling, you know, pushing into the base and Travis would sit back with siege weaponry and you can build these things called redstone launchers, which are basically like uh, trebuchets. He would build this sort of forward base wherever we were sieging with, with redstone launchers and unit spawners. And I would end up going in with the units, fighting, coming back out, getting more. And you could see like the action happening on both areas was so cool and in sync. I would be in the base and I might spot something like a defensive tower or a unit barracks or um, a shield generator that needed destroying that I couldn't reach. And I could say to Travis, hey, there's this building at this location. I need you to take it out. And he could do that while I was fighting enemies. And it just felt like this really cool strategy co-op experience that has a lot to offer. We genuinely had so much fun doing the sieges that we ended up doing, I think, all of them in one night. <laughs> we kind of got into the game on our first night and then the second night we just like did all the sieges. And then the third night we did sort of the ending of the game, which I'm not gonna go into because that's spoilers territory, everybody. But I found myself kind of bummed when there was no more sieges for me to do because I wanted to keep doing them. But on that note, what I hope is that Mojang will consider adding like post campaign content or like additional campaigns even, maybe other Minecraft legends within the Minecraft world with the same sort of gameplay because I would love to do more of this gameplay. At the same time, I really respect how there isn't never ending content in campaign. There certainly is never ending content in verses and with what I what I imagine will happen with Lost Legends and Myths. I don't know what they're doing with that yet fully because there wasn't a lot there in the pre-release version. Certainly there will be things for you to do if you love this game, but I could see so much potential in adding additional campaigns because that siege is just so much fun. Maybe we need to try versus. Maybe I need to fight Travis in versus mode. I will be honest, I don't like my chances, but I would try it. But the point is the siege gameplay is tons of fun and I would love to do more of that. It was genuinely like a captivating gameplay experience for me. And between him and I, it's some of the most fun we've had in a co up strategy game for a long time. And that is our favorite genre. Like, I can give you some recs if you want in the comments. Okay, let me know, because co-op strategy is our thing. I will give you the deets. Just ask me, okay? So, our look is done. What do we think? Let me give you the, the smiles, right? She's all improv. She's all made up as we go. Oh, hey, that's cute. I did what I could with the colors I had. I think I kind of nailed it. All right, but this is the look. Let me know what you think. 
Let me know if based on some of the clips I showed you, if you would have done something different with the look. And if you want to do your own Minecraft Legends inspired look, do it, take a picture and tag me on social so I can share it in my Instagram stories, okay? I'd love to see that. So if you want to do that, reach out to me on IG, show me. I want to see what you do. As for my final thoughts on Minecraft Legends, let's get into it. I definitely think you should check it out, especially if you love the Minecraft IP or if you love like co-op strategy experiences, period. Co-op, period, really. I think it's a really good title to play with like a best friend or your partner or your spouse or you know your mom or your dad whatever like however you like to play whoever you like to play with I think this game offers some really cool co-op and teamwork opportunities for you the game definitely would be fun single player but I just feel like it really stands out in a multiplayer setting Lost Legends is a great alternative gameplay mode as well for PvE scenario based gameplay what I really loved was Travis and I could go do that mission and we got a player skin reward for beating it and I think that's really cool overall I really enjoyed enjoyed the game and I really appreciated what the campaign had to offer start to finish and when it was done I also appreciated that I felt like safe to put the controller down maybe explore some other gameplay modes or do something else and it left me with this really warm and fuzzy feeling that I would get from games growing up as a kid where it was a ton of fun to play and I had a blast and then there was a conclusion and there are these versus modes, there is this other like opportunity with multiplayer, but I really feel like this game respected my time in a way that I haven't seen a lot of other modern releases do. And it leaves me with a very fond feeling for the title and it makes me actually wanna go back to it. This is why I'm saying like, I'd love some DLCs. I'd love updates to Lost Legends. When y'all see that news flash, let me know. There's stuff coming to Minecraft Legends cause I'll be there, okay? So if you have any questions about Minecraft Legends or the makeup that I did, please feel free to let me know in the comments and I will get back to you if if I can. I want to get back to as many people as I can within like the recent window of posting this video. So if it's been like a year, I'm sorry, I may not get back to you, but check out my new videos. Okay. In that case, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, just remember video games should be fun. If you're not having fun, try a different one. Okay. These should be tools for stress relief, for enjoyment, for exploration, not sources of anger or frustration. So if you want a game that's gonna do all those good things for you, check out Minecraft Legends when it releases on April 18th. I think it's fantastic and I'd recommend it. I'll see you again soon with another video. I post weekly here on YouTube and I post daily on Instagram. So follow me there or Twitter or TikTok or Twitch if you wanna keep up, but IG is my most frequent and I'll see you again here in a few days for more YouTube, okay? Thank you so much. I'll see you again soon. Bye. Mwah.